And we are live for the Steelers Depot live stream here on Monday, October 4th. Appreciate you guys being here with us. As always, I am Alex Kazor. Alongside me is Dave Bryant answering hopefully as many questions as possible for you guys from 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. So please be sure to send questions in the chat. No worry, we already have some lined up. We'll have probably a fair amount of questions today, I imagine. So if you want to be uh, guaranteed to go to the top of the line, get your question asked and answered as quickly as possible. Please send us a super chat. If you guys could like this video as well, that would help us out quite a bit to get more people into the chat as well. Dave, how you doing? Thanks for being with us. I'm doing good. Going through some tape this afternoon. A mm-hmm. lot to go through. Steelers 1 and 3, unfortunately. And again, if there's any issues with the video or audio on my end or Dave at Dave's end, please let us know as well, until then, though, we'll start here with the first question, and that comes from, I think there was one that came in a while ago. It's not showing up in the chat anymore, so I apologize to whoever asked questions a couple hours ago. If you could ask that question again, uh, that would help me out quite a bit. Uh, we'll start, though, with Mike Adesso. says, got to say, been a down season for Minka so far. Would you say he's not making the splash plays because he's being asked to do too much, uh, do so much more this year with lack of Denver wide receiver? Maybe they can keep him back. Mike, the last two weeks, he's kind of played his more traditional Minka role. The first two weeks, it was more slot cornerback work, and I think maybe it was a bit too much and it was a little uncomfortable for him, something he hasn't done in a while. So um, the last two weeks, he's kind of been been switched back to, I think, a more normal role. But, I mean, he's just leaving some plays on the table. Best, I think, encapsulated by that dropped interception against Aaron Rodgers yesterday. That would have been such a huge play uh, for him to make for this defense to have. And so I don't think it's been as bad as some of the PFF numbers show, but uh, he's not been his typical Minka self. Yeah, they claim he's been out of position, you know, uh, on several plays, and that's what's led to his bad grade with with uh, with them. Now, obviously, we don't have a full grasp of how they go about their grading system. And look, it, it boils down to, I mean, you, you know the splash plays when you see them type things. You know the impact plays when you see them, especially when it comes to a, uh, uh, a, a safety type and all. And like you said, the last couple of weeks have been kind of more more traditional to, for, for, for what he does uh, and you know had that uh, one you know had, had an opportunity yesterday and you don't get many of those a game and you definitely don't get uh, many of those a game when you have a quarterback uh, like like Aaron Rodgers either there so uh, and yeah and Alex and I talked on the uh, podcast this morning too even on the uh, the, 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 the play that uh, Terrell Edmonds got beat across his face by Cobb there uh, you want to make an impact play I mean he slipped in the end zone there at least if if, if, if Minka doesn't slip there he makes the tackle short of the goal line, and you have some blades of grass to defend, and who knows, maybe you hold him to a field goal in that situation there and all. But, uh, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, look, I mean, defense in general, I mean, uh, and, and obviously offense, you know, not enough plays going around. Yeah, for sure. Andresa with a $2.79 super chat. Thank you so much. Has a question. Hey, what's the criteria for a successful pass? Is it the same as a successful run? And realistically speaking, shouldn't we be 2-2? Two and two? One game back doesn't look that bad uh dave you're the success rate guys you've been talking about that for as long as anybody i know how would you define a successful pass play yeah and and it's the same criteria as it is with the successful run and what it is is uh it's 40 percent of first down yardage needed which obviously most of the time is first and 10 but obviously if it's it's shorter or longer than that then it's 40 percent of that number or better uh, second down, 50% of the needed yardage or better. Uh, and then third down, 100%, uh, third and fourth down, 100% of the uh, yardage needed. Now, any play over six yards, regardless, or especially with a run, I don't know how they classify passes in those situations. I'm going to have to uh, uh, jump back and, 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 and research that uh, probably at a later date there. But I know uh, any run six yards or longer is automatically deemed a successful run. And I would imagine a pass too for, 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 for that matter there. So uh, uh, same criteria is usually what I go off of. Mostly what I'm most considered uh, uh, most worried about when I do find success rate is run success rates because that, you know, everything kind of rolls off of mm-hmm. that from there. Right, right. 
And then for as, as far as them, you know, being one and three instead of two and two, sure. I mean, they've had chances. They've had close games against, you know, the Bengals for some stretches were close and the Raiders game, you know, was close and they could have, you know, had some key moments to really get back into that game. Same could be said against the, against the Packers yesterday, but uh, they're just not making those plays. And if you don't make those plays, you're not going to win those games. Robert Tolbert, the culture of the O-line is lackadaisical, getting blown off the ball, not lining up with any urgency. When you do well, the team does well. You guys are the heart and soul of the team. Yeah, Robert, I mean, to the overall big picture point, you know, I had said entire offseason, it wasn't like it was some sort of crazy, nuanced, advanced point that I made, but I said the X factor of this team is the offensive line. As they go, so will the offense, and by extension, so will the team. And they have not played well. They played poorly overall, and the team has played poorly uh, as well, especially this offense. So I, I think there's been... I think urgency has been there. I think they're they're an aggressive group. They're a more physical group than, than last year. But, you know, where, where they kind of are the more physical group, they're lacking in the technique and some of the detailed things that last year's group could do well, but last year's group lacked the physicality and the toughness and um, the drive and the finish. And so it's like both parts are missing, like the key other half component of good offensive line play. Um, so I, 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 I wouldn't say that they're, that they're lackadaisical. I just think they're not technically sound. Yeah, I, I don't think it's lackadaisical by, by any stretch. It's just <laughs> they're making a lot of mistakes. It's just you know not technically sound. Uh, and you know the good thing is is uh, I mean we're celebrating uh, how many rushing yards yesterday, Alex? Yeah, Najee had sixty two. I think it was like sixty one or sixty two as a team. Yeah, and what was their success rate uh, uh, that I said uh, over 70%? I mean, mm -hmm. you, you feel like we should be throwing a parade or something, yeah. <laughs> getting a key to the city or something for, for somebody uh, when, when when that happens. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, you, there was push along the line there. Now, look, uh, don't get me wrong. The uh, Going through the all-22 tape this afternoon and all, it's littered with more mistakes in there, but at least there were more successes in there. But, you know, the fact of the matter is, too, that the only ran the ball they didn't run the you know to get it didn't get a chance to run the ball enough you know uh normally you have those run success uh if you run early and then you're, you're punching the ball in the end zone you get chances to run successful late and really they didn't get the opportunity to to, to, to do that it ended up becoming just uh uh garbage fantasy point time for Najee Harris I thank him for that but uh <laughs> that, that that's what it turned into yeah, um, you're right. Can can Kendrick Green please execute a down block? He missed another one on Kenny Clark where he's, his angles are just poor and he's not getting his head across the, the right way. He's actually getting his head across and he's not getting the, the down block on that, not hitting the right shoulder. And that's happened in, I think, the last three games where he's missed one of those down blocks on the, one of those power runs with the backside guard pulling. And it's been a big reason why that play's been blown up. And so um, it's just small stuff like that that he has to be able to do. And it's not just Kendrick Green, of course, but I think he's been, to me, if you had to pick somebody as the weak link in the run game, it's been him. Or the weakest well, there's, link. There, yeah, there's one play in the second half. looked like he ran into a brick wall, and that brick wall's name was Kenny Clark mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for sure. Uh, the upside is, is that was probably Kendrick Green's best game of the season. <laughs> the, the, the downside is, is he had nowhere to go but up. Mm -hmm. And uh, once again, it, it, it really is littered with uh, – uh, with with more run run blocking fails and pass blocking fails, yeah. ob obviously as well too. Trey Turner got walked back, uh, and really on that same play, if you look at the uh, end zone uh, view of that, Dan Moore got worked over. So uh, Ben Ben was really just mm -hmm. sandwiched in between the two. So it wasn't just Trey Turner on that one. Right. Yeah, it's a good point. He actually got pulled down by the right defensive end that Moore got walked back by, and that's why he went to the ground, but uh, pressure from both sides on that play. A couple of super chats here. Appreciate it. First one from Travis Herco, $10. Thank you so much, Travis. You donated before. Really appreciate it. Only one donation. No more donations, because I think you like to send four or five in a in a show, and we appreciate that, but uh, there's no need to. says, at what point is anyone going to address the defense hitting and not tackling going through the last two games? I've seen 23 times when a player should have been, should have been wrapped up and was shoulder-checked. Yeah, um, we'll see what the missed tackle report is from Josh Carney. I think he's working on it right now. That'll probably be up tomorrow or Wednesday, and the numbers have not been strong in the last two weeks. Um, I, I can't give you a great answer for why that is. The best thing I could sit there and say, and it's not a, a, a good answer, I suppose, but the idea this team's going for the big hits to try to create the turnovers and force fumbles because this defense knows they have to create splash to pick up an offense that just can't do much of anything right now. So I'm not saying that's the right approach, but I understand if that's the mentality because they need the ball search and take the football away and make those kinds of plays and wrap up tackles don't always get the job done in that sense of the word, at least Bindle 70 has a $10 super chat as well. Thank you so much. This is in reference to Charlie batches comments. And uh, by the way, it was 
Uh, Jonathan Mason said, because we're trying to find the comments on Charlie Bat says, to answer something from the podcast today, the post-game show usually plays on a loop until the locker room show the next day. I've never been able to find it in podcast form. So don't know if we'll get those comments uh, you know, verbatim or not. But Findle says, Batch's remarks about Canada and Ben, it feels to me tinfoil hat the organization is having guys like Dulac and Batch protect Ben's feelings by blaming others. They don't want another Bradshaw, Troy, etc. Thanks. I mean, I haven't listened to all of Batch's comments, so I don't know if there was commentary about Ben's actual play. Um, I think what Batch says, I think it's fair to say that it, it has merit, and it's talking about Canada as you know, not being a good fit overall for, for Ben in this offense. But, um, you know, both things can be true. You know, Canada can do a poor job, and Ben can be playing poorly, and I think both of those things are true. So uh, I can't get into, the you know, their, their psyche and their reason for why they're saying that. I think that at least with what I've heard from Batch, I don't know what Dulac's saying. Um, that Canada has not done a great job overall, but that's true of a lot of guys on this offense, most of the guys on this offense, in fact. Yeah, it's so hard to comment on something that's, you know, second, third-hand information like that. I don't doubt what Charlie is saying or what what, what seems to be out there, but it would be better if we had just the full context and they were able to hear it for ourselves. I know there's some stuff out there saying that Ben doesn't have, uh, you know, the the ability to check out of certain things or 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 you know change the player or what have you, you know. But uh, and and to, you know, it's hard to address something so vague like that, you know. And you know, would we know for sure or not? You know, unless somebody really ask the question, you know, of, of of Ben or Canada, you know, and maybe they will this week, then. You know, it, it really is hard to comment on that kind yeah. of stuff. I mean, it is kind of peculiar. You see the situation like we had in that uh, that we talked about on the podcast this morning about that fourth down play to to, to Juju on the mesh route uh, into his own coverage there. And uh, are they not? And also, you know, the play clock's running down. You send Najee out wide. There's like by the time he gets set, there's like six and a half seconds on the play clock. Mm -hmm. And. You know, it's counting down. Uh, ben lifts his leg the first time. It's like five seconds. Uh, if you if if you if if you're Ben and you know what you have there in that situation, uh, and you know it's zone, which I you know I think there's enough there to to let you know that there is zone just by by, by the way they treated uh, Najee out wide. And if that's the case, and you know your plays, you know you don't you don't have a high percentage play running into that then it's probably the quarterback's uh, job to call a timeout there, you know, mm -hmm. and, and he didn't, you know, so, you know, who, who are you going to put that on? I mean, yeah, the, you know, okay. You can put it on the play call or didn't have the right play call for, for the situation and, and guessed wrong as far as the def defense is going to uh, see, but all right, I'm sure that happens more than once a game, <laughs> you know, fix the, fix the problem. You know, uh, just don't just don't run the play right into it if you can avoid it. Yeah, I will say, and I still think, you know, obviously it, it wasn't the right play call for that situation ultimately. And that is hindsight. But, you know, coordinators and coaches and everyone gets judged by what actually happens, not always just the process of it all. Um, they had run that concept earlier in the game in a similar down distance and semi-similar line of scrimmage where there was in plus territory and they had gotten man and they ran mesh and they had gotten man. It was a deep shot to Deontay and Juju had gotten open. So it, when I see that in context, it makes a little bit more sense that Canada would be expecting uh, man coverage again in, in a similar down distance kind of situation, but uh, obviously didn't happen. And, and yeah, as soon as the uh, as, as Harris walked out in the corner, covered him, then that's a good zone clue indicator. And so um, something maybe has to change there, but uh, I, I, I understand the thought process a little bit more kind of going through some of the all 22. I mean, you know, it, it, did, did Ben have enough time to change that play at that point? It, right. Does he, they, he, did, he didn't have time. That's the thing. They, they didn't break the huddle. So it was like 12 seconds left, which is a right. big problem. Right. You know, and you know, that, that's the thing that I pointed out this morning and I pointed out on Twitter too, is it didn't look like he had enough time uh, right. now, but, but is that something that's worth uh, him addressing is there, you know, is there enough time at seven seconds to use some sort? Of, there was no urgency on his part once he saw Najee out there. He lifts the leg even, you know, uh, and and you know, the the first time and still no 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 urge. He didn't seem too overly concerned about it, you mm -hmm. know. At, at at that point, you would think if you're running something right, I mean, uh, if you're running a play right into in, in, into a zone coverage like that, uh, and it's designed to be a a, a man beater. You think you try to get out of it, you know, especially on fourth down. 
Yeah. Or, or, and what I mean by you know, call timeout and do do everything you can not to not to run the play. Right. I, I just want to know why they broke the huddle so late. I mean, that's a fourth mm-hmm. down play. The other fourth down, the first failed one, the, the pass in the flat to Najee, they got to take a timeout to play before that. So they're just not they're not executing this stuff from the start well. And I think that's not helping the the, the results, obviously. Yeah, that and of course it probably won't get asked uh, to Tomlin on Tuesday or 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 to Ben on Wednesday, but it's kind of things or 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 Canada on on Thursday. Say what well, what happened? Where you know it seemed like they were getting to the line of scrimmage so late on that fourth down play. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I would not expect them to give give an answer. I think it's a worthwhile question to ask, but Canada is as tight lipped as he doesn't say anything in these in these moments. Mm-hmm. Uh, Findle says, by the way, Dulac's big complaint is, in, uh, is that uh, Ben doesn't like Canada up in the box, that he should do what Ben wants and go to the field. Yeah, I'm sure Ben doesn't love it, but I mean, I, I'm not going to pretend like my Canada standing on the sidelines is going to fix the issues for this team. But I, I could understand where Ben's coming from. Yeah, where does all this stuff I mean, it feels like some of this stuff's just manufactured from some of these beat riders, but anyway. Yeah, I mean, some of it's probably if, if if the offense was running fine, then no one would be talking about this as as an issue right now. So maybe we're searching for some stuff there. But um, yeah, again, I don't think it's the, the the big issue there. Obviously, all right. Back to the questions here, and again, please, sure, if you could like the the live stream here and send questions. We're here till eight p.m. Uh, let's see. Jonathan Mason says, "Looks to me that Ben is just bailing on the play and throwing it too quick." Honestly, I think Charlie was just saying that Ben doesn't have the freedom to check into another play like he used to do. Yeah, I'm sure there's some grain of truth to that. I think the menu of plays and the playbook as a whole has been much more limited this year under new OC as opposed to Randy Feetner, which isn't uh, unusual, I suppose, but still damaging nonetheless. Jason Bodine says, uh, "Hello, Dalex. Uh, nobody really gets a true passing grade so far this season. It's been bad all around, and I don't see it getting better. But it all starts with Ben. It's obvious he's done mentally. I don't know if I would say he's done mentally. I think it's very hard to look into the psyche of him. I think he's a big competitor and wants to win, and he, I'm sure, probably knows that this is his last season. Does not want to play his last season going six and eleven and getting hit fifty-seven times a game. So I don't know if he's done mentally. I think he's frustrated." Um, and he's not playing well, um, and physically, I think he's got some some issues, obviously. But mentally, it's hard for me to say that he's done uh, from from the neck up. Yeah, I, I don't think he's done mentally, but I think he is uh, uh, uber sk- skittish about yeah. interior pressure I think that's now. True. <laughs> I mean, how can you blame him? <laughs> you, <laughs> you know, sooner or later, you get smashed in the hand with a hammer, and you see the hammer coming again. You think you're going to get smashed in the hand again? You know. All right. Uh, th- that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, well, was it Pavlov's dogs or, or how, how does that theory go? <laughs> what are you trying to say? The Pavlovian response? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, the, what, you know, you know, I think, you know what I'm getting at there is just, I don't think, I don't think he trusts it. And I think you really see that, uh, on, on the fourth down play to Naji there, you know, uh, the MO now is to, 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 uh, uh, to sugar those gaps up. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, uh, make it look like coming in and, and how does he know it's not, you know, right. uh, you know, what, what kind of indicators are there that, that maybe it's not coming and he's so afraid about it coming. He's assuming that it is going to come instead of making sure it comes. And then he's just, he's, he's just getting rid of, rid of the football. Cause he's, he, you know, he's tired of getting punched in the mouth, you right. know? Yeah, um, uh, no, I think that that's a fair point. I think he just he's uncomfortable back there. He does not trust his offensive line, and, and with good reason overall, with the way he's taken, you know, the hits he's taken this year. And I think that's not helped him at all. Um, and and I, there was a question here, a comment here from Joey Junior says even Brett Favre said the first thing to go is the mental awareness. Mister Roethlisberger has shown a lot of that. Yeah, I mean, I, who might disagree with Brett Favre? But I, I I bring up that point because actually I was just listening to Aaron Rodgers. Uh, in his post game presser, and he said that um, this was a couple of years ago when he was getting older. Obviously, and he said, you know, when the legs go, your whole game kind of goes. And so Rogers was really working on squats and weightlifting and stuff like that in the off season. And with Ben, obviously, his legs are a lot different, even compared to a couple seasons ago. Um, the mobility is really, really limited, and he's had the knee problems and things like that. And you really kind of feel that with obviously the extend the play and backyard Ben stuff, but even some of the stuff inside the pocket and in, in pocket mobility um, within the tackle box. I think has been uh, we've seen regression there as well. And I think you're kind of seeing that when the legs go, the rest of the body goes. You never heard of Pavlog's dog study and, 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 and all that. No, I have, I was going to actually ask you, I have a Pavlovian response because, um, I have, I have, you know, uh, my, 
uh, phone set to ding whenever I get like Twitter alerts, messages from you, and just you know stuff from Schefter and, st- and things like that. So every time my phone dings, like I have, I literally like squirrel and just turn immediately to my phone so I, I can catch it right away. Do, do you do you have that too? Do you set your phone where it dings, or like you kind of have that res- that response? I've I've graduated now to where I have different rings for different things, uh, so okay. I'm even worse. Uh, uh, so you know, I, I I know if it's you, I know if it's uh, somebody else DMing me, I know if it's a certain person. Uh, 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 with a with a breaking news on on, on Twitter, that kind of thing. There, mm. so I'm even worse. That's, a, that's gra- a good idea, though. I've graduated way beyond that now, and uh, also my phone goes with me in bed, so you can imagine my if if I fail to you know right before I go to sleep, turn it off for the two hours that that I sleep. Uh, what what wife wifey likes <laughs> to think about that? Not too happy. Yeah, that's a good idea because yeah, I, my my phone dings the same way whether it's an Uber Eats alert or it's a DM from you, which. Makes me always think that it might be something newsworthy. Usually, it's not, but that ten percent of the time that it is, you, you always have to check it. I uh, might just be. I just might just be checking and say hello. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't do that, because I'll be going. <laughs> What's happening? What's going on? What move happened? Who who got injured? Anyway, <laughs> Mike Adessa, who is leading the defense in slot snaps this season so far? Is there really any answer there? Because Millette ain't it. I think Millette actually played decent against the Packers. His run defense was was solid. I don't have the exact number right now. My I'll do my um charting here uh, sometime later this week, my kind of quarterly charting. And so it's either it's either Millett or Trey Norwood. Um, it's been Norwood was early, and millette has been more the guy the last uh, couple of weeks. So they're probably pretty close. Mm-hmm. Uh, Feels like it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, BMK, Bully Mob Kennel, week 17 versus Brown, second quarter, number two. Mason Rudolph throws a dime to number 18, about 40 air yards down the field. Number two was hit and threw off his back foot. The placement was nice. Can Ben make that throw? If not, can... Rudolph be worse. So basically saying, you know, should this team turn to Rudolph? Uh, Dave, what do you think? Uh, I think it's going to happen sooner or later this season. And, and it might just be one of those things that they, you know, uh, don't have a choice because it, Ben can't keep getting punched in the mouth. Uh, uh, Alex is going to have a highlight tape full of those kind of uh, oomph moments. Yeah. Highlight is, uh, is, a, is a word to use. Uh, yeah, uh, there. So... At some point, this I'll, I'll predict. At some point this season, we'll see Mason probably starting, and unfortunately, it might be due to injury. You mm-hmm. know, because uh, I just don't see how this guy. I mean, even that what we just talked about earlier in the show on on, on that sack there, you get to see that uh, that that end zone view of it, and he pulled down by. I mean, he was slammed down to the ground by the back of his neck. You know, mm. uh, and, 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 you know, had they not changed that horse collar rule that, that, you know, that's a horse collar penalty, but, uh, and then, you know, something that, that you don't really see, I think, uh, is it first half they're down deep in there. Uh, Najee Harris doesn't do a good job on a, uh, on, on one of those pickups there. And Ben takes one right in the mouth there, I think, you know, and then you go back to right. the game against the Bengals yep. and, and, uh, on that pass to, uh, to chase Claypool, DJ reader, right up underneath the chin there. I mean, this guy, I mean. You know, nobody likes getting hit at that at, at, at any age, but at his age now, he, and and all the injuries he's had, I mean, you got to wonder when, when when enough is enough. You know, yeah. there. And he's already playing hurt. He's got the pec injury. I'm sure that's not really been better since he's been playing since he first heard it in the in the Raiders game. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, Tony H. What do you think? Absolutely, our corner. Let me re- right, hold on. What do you think about our corner and quarterback situation from Tony H? I mean, we just kind of talked about the quarterback situation in terms of the cornerback room. Um, you know, it, it's some of the youthful guys there, some of the new faces. I think they've had to play a lot more zone coverage than they probably have in the past and would like to do. It's forcing them to blitz a little bit less often as well. And I think that's kind of, you know, one reason why the lack of pressure hasn't been as strong as it has been. In, in recent years. Um, now some of that's injury related as well, obviously, but as they, they all kind of go hand in hand. And so um, you have some young cornerbacks back there trying to figure out roles and it's not as clean cut as it has been, you know, the last two seasons. Well, look, you're not going to, you know, I, I think it's a lot to expect to, to think that Joe Hayden's going to be back next season. You know, mm-hmm. uh, I think it's reasonable to expect that he won't be, uh, you know, you're obviously going to have Sutton still uh, 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 under contract and all. Uh, what else are you going to have back there? Yeah, from there, it kind of becomes an, an unknown. A lot of guys, I mean, you'll have Trey Norwood back there in the slot role. Uh, James Pierre potentially on the outside. Hopefully his game continues to evolve and could be a full-time starter next season. Potentially Sutton Pierre on the outside. And from there, you're probably drafting some guys or signing some guys. 
Right. I mean, I, in other words, I think that's a position that you're probably going to have to address in, in, in the draft. Uh, we'll see what happens with, I mean, Witherspoon can't even get a helmet right now. It makes you kind of wonder, you know, uh, if, if they'll, if they do resign him, it'll be for peanuts, you mm-hmm. know, uh, and then, you know, not, not guaranteed a spot there. So, I mean, that's definitely, I, I think cornerback's definitely a position that they're going to have to address in, in, in the draft and address early at that. Yeah. Christopher Welvenhaus. Hey, Alex and Dave, is it too soon to look forward for agency and seeing if we can pick up some O linemen? And given the youth they have, well, who do you think would ride the bench in this case? I mean, I know people have asked about it, and Dave, we have similar thoughts. They're not going to sign somebody unless there were like multiple injuries happening here. Mitchell Schwartz, Russell Okung's not walking through this door. So, and who would get benched would depend on who they signed and where they play. But uh, I'm not anticipating that happening really at all this season. No, I I don't either. I've said that for for the longest time now. I mean, they're going to ride with uh, look. You know, hopefully you're going to get uh, Zach Banner back as early as uh, as this next Sunday, and you know, Coward uh, uh, dealing with an ankle injury, uh, n- not serious enough to go on IR that with that yet. So you know, he he he's one of your top or, or one of your reserves at least, and. Uh, no, I you know, it'd take a couple of injuries, a couple of guys going on IR. E- even so, you know, you're not going to go out there and spend a lot of money to 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 get a guy off the street if right. you need one. Yeah. Uh, Verdon Barzi has a question about Adrian Clem. Says, how much percentage of the O line issues do you think is talent, Clem coaching, or just time? Additionally, was there a clear mistake in the draft of these players? It's hard to parse that stuff out. Um, you know, coaching can be so tough to evaluate because their impact Monday through Saturday and you see the product on Sunday. And again, they're judged off of that. But, you know, you look at what are they taught to, taught to do and what they, aren't they doing and, and those kinds of things. Um, what do you think, all we, all, Well, all we can do is just go off the tape, man. Sure. I yeah. mean, you know, we, you know, we don't we're not there at practice and we don't know what's being taught. I mean, all we can do is watch the tape and then pass along what we see on the tape. You know, that way and look we're constantly learning new things you know uh mm-hmm. uh you know thankfully with twitter and 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 uh, uh and with duke and some of the videos he has and brandon some of the videos that he has up there you're constantly learning new new things yeah. but uh, uh on top of it i like to think that we got a good a, you know pretty good grasp combined you and i that we we can get through some tape pretty good and and, and do a pretty good job of uh grading and judging what we see there and you know, right now it's just a lot of technical stuff in, in, in there. You know, I think Kendrick Green's got to get a lot stronger for starters, and then he's got to get more technically sound at the position. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dotson's just got to get more technically sound, and you would have hoped that would have happened in his second year now. Uh, Trey Turner's, you know, going to be gone after this year. Uh, B.J. Finney's not going to be back after this year. Uh, obviously, Dan Moore's got to get, you know, he's a rookie. He's going to go, he's going through his growing pains right now. Chiquamo Corfor is not going to be back next year. Uh, Zach Banner's going to have to, we'll know real quick whether or not Zach Banner, you know, in these next five, six, seven games, whether or not Zach Banner will even be back, even though he's under contract. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, uh, that's going to be another position, at least guard that you're going to address in 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 the draft, and you know probably even a tackle position as as well. And you don't have the draft, you don't have the draft, uh, 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 you know, picks to do to do everything that you want to do with. So right. some of that might have to come in free agency. Yeah, it may. Um, I would just say I, I don't think they've been terribly coached in terms of like looking lost or out of position. There's been a lot of issues, obviously, and Clem, you know, is responsible for that. Ultimately, uh, the, the big thing you would look at though, is just what is the growth of this group throughout the year? Do they improve? Do they get better? Do they correct some of those mistakes? You know, instead of looking at things just game by game, you know, how did things look in game one, game two compared to game 16, 17? And if you're seeing growth and improvement and you're seeing players getting better, you're seeing coaching take hold. And, and that's probably the better measure of it in totality than opposed to the, uh, the four week snapshot right now, uh, bird. And that's the best way I can answer that for you. Uh, Mario Ro- Rocha says Steelers drafting a quarterback in the first round. Maybe it depends on a lot of variables, you know, who's available draft picks, uh, where they're picking um, the, the strength of this group, those kinds of things. But uh, this team needs a franchise quarterback. In my uh, opinion, I've said it for, for a long time now, uh, the next franchise quarterback's not on this roster and you got to go find him. So um, that's the main goal for this team right now is to, to, you know, have that siren going off that red alert of uh, needing to find a franchise quarterback. Of course, much easier said than done, but that is the mission for this team. 
Speaking of direct messages, your eagle has landed, sir. Okay. I know what that means. So thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> Going on to the questions here. Uh, this is next question from Mike. Talking about positives. Are there any positives right now we can discuss? And sure, I mean, the, the run game took some small steps in the right direction. That was good. As Mike said, Kim Hayward continued to play well. I think Joe Sherbert, at least in coverage, had a good game overall. Um, and the team has gotten healthier in some respects. So those are all positives to take away. Yeah, I mean, Joe. I thought I thought Joe even intercepted that one. It kind of, you know, I had to kind of kind of watch that one uh, twice in the end zone there. So, mm -hmm. uh, I I thought overall he played that. You know, that's another guy. Is he going to be back next year too? You know, he uh, he, he got yeah. uh, the rest rest of this season to get a good evaluation on him and see if he's worthy. I think you almost have to as long as he as long as he can. You know, does does it really? play horrible the rest of the season i think you really got to consider uh bringing him back next season yeah uh because if you let him go it's another position you have to fill and you're already gonna have probably a lot a lot of positions to, to deal with and his play's been okay so yeah i think he comes back uh let's see uh, i had a question here actually Braden miller says have a nice night you guys thanks for the great coverage no matter how bad of a team we root for appreciate that Braden. thanks for being here Here's the thing, we, you know, win or lose, you know, people, uh, we're, we're going to be here breaking this stuff down because mm -hmm. we like, you know, A, we love the game uh, and we like learning. So, and then it also helps, you know, get us, uh, give us an understanding of what this team needs moving forward uh, on top of it there. You know, obviously we're not hoping that this team uh, continues to lose, but if they do, you know, uh, we'll, we'll go through the tape, we'll talk about it and ways to get better and go from there. Yeah, absolutely. We're here, good or bad. We survived 2019. We'll, uh, we'll survive this as well. Uh, Storm Woodside, good night, gents. What are your guys' thoughts on Sam Howell? I don't have any right now, to be honest with you, the quarterback from North Carolina. Uh, talk to Jonathan Hightritter. He's doing kind of our draft stuff right now. Dave and I will kind of circle and certainly have some thoughts as we get closer to the draft. Yeah, I'm trying. You know, obviously, I'll pay attention to Nevada and Carson Strong okay. and, and, and Malik. I've watched a little bit of the Liberty stuff. Not a lot. Uh, I, I don't, you know. It's just getting in tune with what's out there right now. And, you know, I'm not anywhere close to where I can even put these guys ranking or whatnot. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I just am I am making myself aware of who these top, you know, 10 are, because I think it's kind of obvious that. One of them might end up being a Pittsburgh Steeler, you yeah. know, uh, uh, next year. Uh, the further we get into this thing, obviously into the off season, uh, digging a lot, lot deeper in there. But you know, it's just more than anything right now because because our full time job is to cover the Steelers. It's just you know any 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 extra time that we get, we we just try to get ourselves more and more aware with some uh, of of some of these guys. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so the, the the chat's being weird again. I guess it only archives them for so long, so I apologize. I think I might have missed a couple of questions. But Simon had one that said something basically, how bad does it have to be until Tomlin is on the hot seat? Um, is that even a possibility for Tomlin if the season goes super sideways, Dave? I, I don't think so. Yeah, uh, me I mean... I don't know if, if if they if they lost out from here and 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 Ben you know Ben was still able to breathe you know <laughs> uh, I, I I just would be surprised I really would I mean the guys you know never had a loot this you know would obviously be his first losing season under 500 uh, yeah there's been disappointments when it comes to the playoffs and all but I, I think he he is at least uh, 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 got himself to, you know, the benefit of the doubt to not just one bad season and toss him out kind of. Let me tell you, he wouldn't be on the street very long. No, uh, uh, 24 if, hours. If, if you did fire him. So, uh, and and no, that's not a reason just to keep him. But mm -hmm. uh, I, I still think, you know, look, uh, uh, players really talk highly of him. And, and I think he's a good coach. And, uh, you know, does he probably need to maybe – do a better job at the hires moving forward. That's a possibility uh, as well. But I think he's a good coach, and I think it. I would be stunned, regardless of what happens the rest of this season, if 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 Mike Tomlin was fired. Yeah, I can't see any scenario, no matter how bad things get. He got that long term extension for a reason because this will be Ben's last year. This could easily be Colbert's last year, and so Tomlin's going to be the face of this franchise going forward and hoping to write this new chapter. And you're not going to 
lose your head coach, your GM, and your quarterback all in one year and try to keep stability and continuity, and uh, that's just too much change. That might not, might not be a good, satisfactory reason for a lot of people, but uh, I'm just telling you what's going to happen. Tom is not getting fired under any circumstances. Uh, let's see. Next question comes from uh, Ivan Guerrero. What are your thoughts? What do you think will get this team to turn around? Will we even make the playoffs? Playoffs right now? Just playoffs. <laughs> Just want to win a game. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's that's perfect timing on it's, that one. It's it's first down offense. It's a better run game and getting some splash plays and defense and special teams. Those are kind of the the big picture keys right now uh, to turning this thing around. This thing around will it happen? I certainly have my doubts, but uh, those are the keys. I tell you, I'm 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 almost. I mean, I, I'm almost to the point where I w- I will say I will be shocked if this team makes the playoffs. That's how close I am. Yeah, I mean, just not even the fact of how they're playing, but the rest of the AFC North is three and one. I mean, you better start winning those games. You're going to need to win, like, almost run the table in the in the division and, and win some other ones just to, to get back into this thing because those teams already have a lot of space in front of you. Well, look, I had this team at nine and eight, and I, and I had them actually winning the division because I, I thought the division would be a little bit softer and also because uh, I had uh, four of their wins coming within the division. All right. Mm-hmm. And now here they are. zero and one. And one of those uh, and, and their loss is obviously to a team that I thought they would sweep this year in the Bengals. So uh, I tell you what, you 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 dang sure better win the rest of your divisional games right now, uh, the way it's looking. And then uh, you better win a couple more on top of that. Absolutely. Uh, time starts now. It starts in week five against Denver. Uh, let's see back to the questions here. I saw one that I wanted to, to uh, comment. I wanted to get kind of your opinion on Dave. Eddie Harlow says, why can't fans let Ben go? Bradshaw broke my heart at the end. What was that, that 83, 82 season with Bradshaw? What was that kind of feeling? Do you remember what it was like when the, as you, as you knew Bradshaw was exiting and he had the, the shoulder or the elbow injury and, and, and it just kind of fell apart for him? No, I I don't remember what it was like because you got to remember I did you know I, I don't I didn't have the access that mm-hmm. I do now. Everything came days later, weeks later, kind of thing. Uh, more than anything, you're at the mercy of mostly anything that you'd get on the uh, on the local news or uh, in Sports Illustrated. I mean, mm. you can remember I you know I didn't you know I didn't get subscriptions to the uh, Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Uh, uh, didn't have the big giant satellite dish out back, you know, uh, for whatever version of ESPN was up and running back there. So it was really, it was just one of those things that you knew was happening uh, kind of thing. So obviously different feeling then than now, because you're in tune with every, every single minute of this right. team now, you sure. know, whereas back then you didn't. So, uh, uh, but I mean, I, I, I can imagine some fans back, th- back then, I mean, you go back now and you can read all the, uh, the old archive newspapers and the letters to the editor and, and that kind of, kind of thing. And, you know, uh, it, it's like any era though. I imagine some are ready to move on. Uh, some are defending the quarterback and play and, and want to fire all the coaches, you know? Right. So I, I think some things never change in that aspect. Look, I mean, most of the people, you, uh, most of these people in this chat here, uh, Ben is all they've known, you know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, as the Steelers quarterback. So I imagine it it, it, it is hard, but uh, there's always the first day and there's always the last day. So, uh, and, you know, that, that window with Ben supposedly has been closing since like 2011 or 12. Well, I think it's finally about to, about to finally yeah. close after all these years now. Last days are near. AZ, would you say the Steelers have more or less than a 1% chance to win the Super Bowl this season, Dave? Where are you at over under 1%? I'm taking the under. Yeah, I'd probably take the under too. I mean, I, I surely wouldn't put any money on it at this point. Uh, yeah. No matter, you know, uh, uh, no sizable money, kind of regardless of the odds, you know. Uh, I mean, it, there would be a point, I guess, where the odds – uh, would be like, oh, that's probably worth maybe something, but uh, uh, no, it, it, it's hard to imagine this team. Look, it's hard to imagine this team making the playoffs maybe right yeah. now, let, let let alone making a run uh, through through the Super Bowl. If their defense was playing better, I'd be more apt to say okay, maybe you know, maybe. But uh, you know, their defense not even playing. We don't know when to to it's going to get back, and 
just a lot of lot of popcorn going on in that defensive side of football as well too. Look, this team, Alex and I, right before we get on, you know, we, quick conversation. You know, this team can still win games with Ben at quarterback, but so many things have got to go right on a week to week basis uh, around Ben. You got to have the running game. You got to have this defense probably playing 2008 level. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and, and I, I just don't see that happening there. So it's hard to imagine this team winning the Super Bowl this year, let alone make, make, make the playoffs. Yeah, uh, I agree with you. They can win if everything else goes right, but that's a big indictment on your quarterback. It's saying that you're winning in spite of your quarterback, not because of him. And when you get to that level, then that means you got to find a new guy, and this team does after the season. Empower 1969 uh, has a comment here. I'll just read it and we'll move on. Uh, playing Ben at this point is pure sentiment, poor business de- decision. So Empower wants to see a change at quarterback. Tim Chase, Ben has been downhill since AB left. Must ride with him till the season over or injured your opinions. He's going to be the starter until this team gets eliminated from the playoff uh, race. If that happens, when that happens, um, I think then that conversation about a change probably opens up. Right. Once again, would be uh, uh, might might, ha- might it have already happened organically? Right. If unless it's an injury, of course. Right. Uh, Dragon Jay Z. Why does everyone point the finger at Ben when he has O Lyman giving him a lap dance before the shotgun snap makes it back to him eighty percent of the time? I think everyone recognizes the O line issues as well. I don't think it's all one or all the other. Um, yeah, the Steelers' offensive line looks like Ben looks like. Urban Meyer in the club with this offensive line up on him every single time the guy drops back. But uh, there are multiple issues with this team. It's not just one guy, one unit. It's when it's this bad and it is this bad, uh, it's always more than just one person. Yeah, nobody, you know, it, it's not 100% Ben. But, I mean, there you, you also can't have your quarterback missing throws like he missed in that game yesterday. You know, uh, you're already at a dis- disadvantage of who you're playing on top of there. And you all of a sudden, at least you got some semblance of a running game going. And, you know, you've got you've got to have those splash plays because of the execution not being good, uh, not being consistent enough in all other areas, both offense and defense. You can't miss those explosive uh, play situations, especially ones that, that are that are probably going to end up uh, in, in the end zone, in, in, you know, in, in touchdowns there. And Ben, like it or not, Ben missed those throws. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, he missed them. Uh, you know, that's it. I mean, uh, I, I don't see how you can look at it any way other than that. And that's why, you know, look, I, I still overall on a game by game basis, I still think it goes offensive line, running game, uh, or defense, you know, offensive line, defense, running game, and then Ben. But, I mean, yesterday was a clear example of Ben playing a huge part in that loss. Right, yeah, I hear you. Uh, Keto Kami, thoughts on Joe Haig? He played okay yesterday, better in pass pro than I expected for having to throw the ball, you know, 45-plus times, whatever the number was. Uh, run game looked just okay, not maybe quite as good as I thought it, it might be. But uh, he's probably going to play just enough snaps to screw this team out of a fifth-round comp pick. So that's probably going to be the <laughs> result go. of this thing. So there you go. That'll be uh, something else for bitching that at late in the season there. Yep. F- 15 minutes left, so be sure to get your questions in here before you wrap up the stream. Thanks for everyone who ha- who's hanging out with us. I know it's been a tough couple of weeks here, so I appreciate it. We'll have a recap and an analysis on Steelers Depot and on this YouTube channel throughout the rest of the week. Uh, uh, Jonathan Mason's asking about access. Um, yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. I think we're happy where we're at, Jonathan. But I appreciate the uh, the support there, nonetheless. We 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 hope drive the conversation a lot. I think Dave with the with the with the local, even the national media sometimes. Uh, what 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 was the comment? Um, well, I want to get into all this, but he says it's fair to criticize some of the local media, but will Bert not let Alex get media access? They can joke about y'all being bloggers all they want, but players and others around the team respect Steelers Depot. So I appreciate the uh, encouragement there, Jonathan. I uh, appreciate it. Thank you. And and I would I, I think it's unfair to say that Bert's not letting us get access. Bert's a good guy overall, and uh, we've had good good interactions with him in the past. Uh, let's see. Next question here comes from let's see uh, Leonard Green. People yelling Mason, but the minute he throws a pick, get Ben back in there. Fair weathers. Yeah, um, I understand that sen- that sentiment as well. But uh, it is fair to say that Ben's playing poorly, and uh, that's not uh, a fair weather thing. But I know that's not not the point you're trying to make, Leonard. Uh, Mike Adesso, Dave, who would you rather have on the Steelers next season, Carson Strong or the center from Iowa? I can already hear you answering with yes. 
<laughs> Look, it's still way, way, yeah. way early on it. Boy, that I just uh, got re- introduced myself to that Iowa Senate this past week, man. You want to talk about a guy that can uh, get out from that center position and get on the move and, and uh, throw throw some people out of the club? Uh, he 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 certainly can there. Um, Look, I, I I live in Nevada. Uh, the uh, you know late, late middle of last season, I guess, laying in bed, and you know those games come on. Obviously, you know later out here and all like that. And uh, so I'm I'm gonna you know, I couldn't sleep uh, as usual, so I tuned that one in and and watched some Carson Strong and Romeo Dubs, and and that's kind of how it started. And really, it was more of a fascination with Romeo Dubs first. You know, I love those kind of wide receivers that can get down the field and deliver those explosive plays, and then you start looking. Well, who's this quarterback throwing, uh, throwing these seeds out there? Mm-hmm. And, and it was him. And and you know, obviously, I live in a state, and you know, just kind of manifested from 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 there. But uh, uh, in no way, shape, or form. I mean, it, it's just uh, something that I tune into weekly, and kind of I usually have one, two, three players that I get really fascinated with every year, and you know that. Two of them, obviously, Dubs and, and, and Carson Strong. And, you know, obviously uh, uh, did some Twitter posting on that uh, I, uh, Iowa Center uh, this past week as well, too. So uh, uh, way too early for that, but definitely have my eye on those couple of guys. Afra Kinmazin, I butchered that terribly, I, I'm sure, so I apologize. Says, we should have drafted Creed Humphreys over Green. He and Trey Smith at right guard have transformed Casey's O-line overnight. Um, yeah, I get that. I mean, if you if you drafted Creed, you would, that means you're not drafting Pat Frymuth. And some people might say that's the right decision to make. But uh, and I I love Creed Humphrey coming out of out of Oklahoma, so I might have been right there with you. But Frymuth has played well at least. So there's some consolation in the fact that like Frymuth looks like a good pick, a long term option at tight end, and so that probably makes you feel a little bit better about that. And Trey Smith had the medical, and obviously that was a really good value pick ultimately. But there were medical concerns with him coming out, and that's the only reason why that guy fell to the fifth round, sixth round, wherever he was taken. Is Firemuth still second round talent? For, so from what you've seen so far, I mean, it's too it's, it's too early to obviously rubber stamp it or whatnot. But uh, from what you've seen so far, are, are you thinking, man? I'm sure I'm glad you know they they sure got a steal in the second round. Yeah, I wouldn't call it a steal, but do I think he's a long term option, a tight end for this team, although not a dynamic one? Yeah, I think he is. Uh, he could he, he could be at least, and that's that's to me worth the 55th pick in the draft. Okay. Uh, let's see. A couple more questions here. One from Lumberzack94, and I apologize your questions. I saw them earlier, but they're not showing up at the top of the chat, so they got cut off for whatever reason. Says, uh, hi, Dave and Alex. All this talk about trading for Rodgers has me thinking, why not get a guy who is younger and more proven behind poor lines? What would you think about trading for Deshaun Watson? Listen, I've gotten this question a couple times already until, first of all, and until all the legal stuff has been cleared up and the league has kind of weighed in. No one's touching Deshaun Watson. There's a reason why if that wasn't an issue, he would have been traded by now. So um, you got to get past that point first. I don't know when that'll be. It may not happen until this off season. I know they're asking the moon for Watson and, and, and rightfully so for the quarterback and the value and the talent, but um, I would put those odds at very low for Deshaun Watson becoming a Pittsburgh Steeler. Right. Yeah, look, I, I wouldn't, you know, as if the legal wall got cleared up and all like that, I mean, obviously wouldn't be opposed to it, but uh, that's a, that's a big aspect of this thing. And that's why he's still with the Texans right now and why he hasn't been dealt. So yeah, get, uh, get the legal all cleared up with, and then, then come talk, talk to us about that aspect. I mean, sure. I mean, I, I you know, if you could work out some type of deal and get him and then, and, and not, and, not have all that baggage tied to him. Yeah. Why wouldn't you try to go after a guy like that? Right. But I mean, that there's a lot of, yeah. you know, uh, a lot of stuff that needs to be cleared up. I obviously don't know what's uh, uh, fact fiction uh, all, all in there, but all I know is there's a big cloud over his head right mm-hmm. now. Rick McKee, besides Willis and strong, what quarterbacks are paying special attention to draft eligible or not? Again, I'm probably less equipped to, to or ill-equipped to answer that question fully. There's Sam Howell from North Carolina, Desmond Ritter from Cincinnati. Um, any other names come to mind about quarterbacks potentially in this class, Dave? Oh, uh, yeah, Malik, the kid out of Liberty, yeah. uh, uh, is obviously one. Uh, the Oklahoma kid. Uh, yeah, Spencer Rattler, right? That's his R- name. R- Rattler. Uh, you know, the pit. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, Kenny Pickett. Uh, he looks good. Uh, uh, Pickett, you know, he's got a little bit of an age on him, but, uh, I mean, he's he's – he was ACC player of the week, wasn't he? Uh, and, and, you know, he's a, he's a good game against maybe BC uh, and, or I think Clemson from probably putting himself in the Heisman 
yeah. uh, uh, talk there and all. So uh, that's another one there uh, to, to pay attention to. Look, we got plenty of time. We're going to have plenty of breakdowns on, on all these guys once uh, once we get on into the offseason here, which yeah. is still ways away. <laughs> Pickett has played. Well, there was the local kid, Phil Jerkevich, I think, Jerkevich, um, up in Boston College. He'd gotten hurt, I think, in week one, week two, and lost for the season. But that was the guy that was on my radar, but unfortunately injury doing his season in. A couple more questions we'll get to as well. Was Najee crying on the sidelines last night? I don't think so. I don't know what reference you're making there. The real, no, I but... think it was more of a face palm. <laughs> okay. When did that, what was the situation? I don't even remember that. that uh, just, it was late in the game. Him and uh, Ebron kneeling uh, kneeling side by side. And uh, Najee just kind of had kind of had that face palm going on, I think. Just uh, okay. prob- prob- probably couldn't. But I, I, at least I didn't see any crying. Yeah, uh, Mario Way. Should we keep Hague at right tackle? Now, as soon as Banner's ready, then then he should play, and I suspect Banner will be ready to play against the Broncos. Uh, let's see. No Mason. Why not? Mason Duck went five hundred. This team here is headed for two hundred. That's Empower in eighteen sixty nine. Very adamant about replacing Ben at quarterback. Point taken. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Eddie. you can you can screen for it all you want, but it's not going to happen unless Ben gets injured or this team gets uh, officially eliminated. Yeah, you know. So, I mean, ho- holler away, but you know, you you, you just you wasted breath. Spencer Cleary, how do you think the Steelers get back to the Super Bowl? How do they do that, Dave? Oh Lord! I assume that means beyond this year. Obviously, it's not going to happen this year. But what is the path? Uh, gotta have a, uh, gotta have a, uh, defense, gotta, uh, gotta have a good pass defense for starters and second need a quarterback that can deliver a Justin net yards for passing attempt number over 6.5 and have a running game attached to it. Yeah. I think it all comes down to quarterback for me. I was talking about this on a radio show a little bit ago. Um, you look around the rest of the AFC North, it's all first round picks and Heisman winners. It's Baker, it's Burrow, it's Lamar. You're in an AFC with Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes, first round picks. Um, I'm not saying you have to get the guy in the first round, but you better find a franchise quarterback to compete with those guys because that's what you're dealing with for the next 10 years in the NFL. And you might be a good team with an average quarterback, a veteran journeyman type of guy with a good offensive line and a good defense. That's going to get you somewhere to maybe the playoffs, but you're not going to go anywhere with that. You need a franchise quarterback who can take over and wield yourself in the playoffs. And uh, that's what Ben could do at some point in his career. He can no longer do that, obviously. And so until you're at that point, you're never, you're never going to be better than good until you find that franchise quarterback. By the way, someone was asking about uh, who the team released in order to sign Eli and Koo. Uh, they did not have to release anybody. That practice spot, uh, practice squad spot was open because uh, the outside linebacker swap between Derek Tuska and Jameer Jones. I presume Jones was supposed to go back to the practice squad. He was claimed by the Rams, so his spot was open. And so no one had to be released in order to add him to the practice squad. That's correct. Uh, Mark Tobin, do you think the quarterbacks in next year's draft are pro ready? Some are, some aren't. I'm sure, Mark, I don't have a good evaluation for you right now, and I'm guessing Davey probably don't either. No, do you, do you think like, Carson Strong is pro ready? Just kind of, you watched him, I'm guessing, the most? Uh, I, I think he is for the for the right offense, too. Look, he's you know he is uh, not not that mobile cat, you know, but, I mean, is Mac Jones – how? You 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 know what you studied Mac Jones more than any of us on the site I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, how mobile was Mac Jones? It was functional mobility. Obviously, he wasn't the super athlete or even a good athlete like Trevor Lawrence was. But like I think his mobility within the pocket was super impressive. And you've seen that already a couple times in in the preseason and the regular season. Like I I still care about mobility within the pocket and pocket presence more than I do about outside the pocket mobility. It's it's more important than it was ten years ago, but. If you're not mobile within the pocket, then I don't really care about how mobile you are outside the pocket. Look, uh, uh, Carson Strong's not going to be uh, anything, you know, not even, you know, not close to Baker, not not that kind of player there. Now, he does uh, seem to work okay in the pocket, but you got to remember, too, some of these offenses that these guys run. He runs air raid up there, you know, in, the, uh, in, in Reno. So uh, uh, can, can he function in? You know, an RPO type, you know, system. Uh, can he can he function in some sort of system that would re- require a rollout? And all got to watch him a little bit more. You know, uh, I don't. He's obviously not asked to do that 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 kind of stuff a lot there. So, uh, uh, look, some of these guys you think you know, come, coming out sometimes you think, boy, this guy's this guy's going to be good and hit the NFL. And you know, they 
you know, they, they just don't make it. I mean, how, how many first round quarterbacks go by the wayside, you know, just mm-hmm. two, two or three years into it? No, I mean, look at Sam Darnold, you know, uh, uh, you could probably go down a list uh, 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 of these guys just in the last five years that have kind of worn. Look, look at Haskins, you know, yeah. uh, uh, that that kind of thing there. So, uh, if, it, if if evaluating quarterbacks was a science, man, there'd be a bunch of them, uh, uh, you know, that 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 of uh, this younger generation right now, where you think, boy, uh, going to compete for a Super Bowl. Now, right now, it's just it's it's Brady, it's Mahomes. Uh, can Josh Allen put his name in in in, in that group this uh, this season? Uh, even Lamar Jackson can't kick the door in yet. You mm-hmm. know, he's he's uh, made it to the playoffs, but he can't get can't get past that part of it there. So it's not a science, and I don't think uh, I'm not going to be able to uh, uh, to even have a good evaluation of a lot of these guys until we get a lot closer to draft time. Yeah, here's what it comes down to. Here's the dilemma of the NFL. The most important thing to do for a franchise is to find a franchise quarterback. The hardest thing to do for a franchise is finding a franchise quarterback, and it's a dart throw. And you do your best, and you're going to probably you may whiff a couple times. I mean, you know you know that. Older Sheila fans know that from Bradshaw to Ben. You thought, oh, Bradshaw's gone. We'll just find the next Bradshaw. Well, mm-hmm. you went through Bobby Brister and Mark Malone and Neil O'Donnell and Cordell Stewart and Tommy Maddox until you finally got to, to Ben. And so that was... How long was that? 25 years between uh, the two. And hopefully it doesn't last that long again, but it, it is no automatic thing of just buying the next next bet because that's easier said than, said than done. And look, you to, to some degree, uh, your quarterback in an NFL has got to be able to occasionally extend a play. You know, Burrow, Joe Burrow's not the most mobile quarterback, but we saw what he did the other night, right? Uh, on, on that play to uh, 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 C.J. Uzama. Uh, was able to, to to leak out to that left side there and ma- made it all. You know, you got to have some of those to the built to, ability to deliver those a couple of times, more than a couple of times throughout a season. On top of it, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and because not everything's going to go perfect, you know, uh, play in, play out. You got to have uh, quarterbacks that can that to to some degree extend plays. Probably, you know, obviously not to the degree that Ben did it when in his early age. But I mean, I think that's one element of quarterback play that needs to be considered. How can this how can this quarterback do off script? Right, for sure. I think that's increasingly important. Cut more questions, comments, and we'll wrap up the stream. Uh, Mike Adesso, isn't it kind of weird there's been no updates on Tua with or McFarland? Not really. When they're on IR, there's no obligation to talk about them. They're not on the injury report, so um, I'm not surprised to hear nothing on that front. I mean, they've yeah, asked – Butler's talked about Tua a little bit as well. Right. I, I'm not I'm not surprised. And, you know, Wednesday's the next line in the sand for Tua and McFarland. Mm-hmm. We'll see if they get the clearance to go ahead and practice and – uh, at, at this point, you almost, you know, kind of wonder if, if, if it'll be after the buy for both of them, but we'll yeah. see. Michelle Krishnan, uh, when is Banner coming back? And do you think he will be an improvement? Hopefully for the Broncos game, he's eligible to return. Obviously he was eligible to return last week and this past weekend and, and, and did not. So might need another week, but I'm hopeful for the Broncos game. Do I think he'll be an improvement? Um, yeah, I think in the run game, that's kind of his calling card. So yeah, I think, uh, I'll, I'll be happy to see him. I just want to get a good evaluation on him. I just still don't know a whole lot about Banner's game because he's been unfortunately injured for, uh, so much of his career. Uh, let's see. Do we have any more questions here? Um, someone's asking about if Kendrick Green's going to go to the bench. I don't think so, but if it gets, if it gets bad enough, that I think it's possible, but, uh, not yet. Uh, let's see. Are there any more questions? I'm trying to see if there's any more. Why is it the play calling for Ben to throw to Harris on fourth and ten keeps happening game after game? Who is making those play calls? Um, yeah, obviously they're bad outcomes and, and, and throws. I think, as Dave said earlier, I think Ben's getting spooked there and thinks pressure's coming, so he's trying to throw hot and quick against pressure, and then defenses are dropping out, and that's making it look worse than it is. I don't believe that Harris is the true like design guy on those passes. The next time that they get in that situation, somebody sugars them A gaps, they're going to be coming next time, I promise you. <laughs> That's a good point. They probably will. And Ben's going to be like, hold on to the football. Yeah, and get yeah that. That, that might be the one that we're talking about right there that uh, organically happening. Right, in terms of, of Ben being replaced. So Right. Yeah, he's taking a beating back there for sure. So I think that's going to do it for the live stream today. Appreciate you guys being here. I know it's been tough to watch this team, but isn't it's a lot more fun to talk about this team and, and wins than losses, and it's been three straight losses for, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but hopefully they get back on track against the Broncos. We'll be back in two weeks, so that'll be back after the uh, 
when is it week six game and hopefully talk about them put a team in a much better position than they are right now thank you guys for being here dave as always thank you for being here as well thank you for doing what you do alex you 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 run these things uh really really good i appreciate it uh, sure. peace and love everybody thank you for joining us you want to see an archived version of this it'll be up on steagles depot in a little bit also get archived on the youtube channel we'll have film room breakdowns a little bit later probably starting tomorrow over on the youtube channel and on steagles depot uh, as well of course and thank you guys for being here and we'll talk to you soon